Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. In today's episode of Rigid Body World, we will be creating this simulation. Now, this will be focusing on the dynamics and the simulation rather than the modeling, so a blend file with the car I'll be using is linked in the description of the video so you guys can go download that. Do it, and then we'll hop into Blender. Let's add in a wrecking ball. I'm going to hide the collection with the car and then I'll add in a UV sphere. We need this to be the same size as the car so I'll scale it up a bit. I'll also rename it to Wrecking Ball as it's a good idea to keep your scene organized and such. Now for a chain we can add in a torus and we will rotate that 90 degrees on the Y axis and scale it down. We can use 1 on the number pad to enter the front orthographic view from here. You could also do that by hitting the tilde key to bring up this pie menu and you can select a viewpoint from there as well. Now we can use shift C to toggle the wireframe view and then enter edit mode. I'll use B to make sure I'm using box selection and click and drag to select the top half of the vertices on this torus. Then I'll grab it on the Z axis and move it up and now we have a chain link. We can use Shift D to duplicate this and rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis. Then we can select both these chain links, use Shift D to duplicate them and grab those up on the Z axis. Do this a couple more times. We can also bring the ball up so that it's intersecting the bottom link and select the ball and the link and use Ctrl J to join them together. We can select all those objects and then go to the object button at the top left of the screen, go down to the rigid body section and click add active to add all of these as active rigid body objects. And to fix everything breaking apart like this we can go to the physics settings, change the collision shape from convex hull to mesh, right click that value and use copy to selected to make sure all of these active rigid bodies are using the mesh collision shape. All right, now let's select that top chain, go to its physics settings and uncheck this dynamic box to stop it from moving. Let's also go down to the settings for the wrecking ball and increase its mass to 50 kilograms or so. Playing this back in the viewport, you can see that the chain breaks apart. To fix this, let's just select all the links in the chain. We'll increase the weight of one of these links to 4 kilograms, and then right click that value and use copy to selected, so it will be used across all of the links. And so that the wrecking ball swings, I'll just select all the links and the wrecking ball, but make sure to select the topmost link in the chain last. Then I can go up to the top of my screen and change the pivot point to active element, and that way when I rotate, it will rotate around this top link. Let's just rotate it 70 degrees on the x-axis or so. To finish this part of the setup, we will use Ctrl A and select Rotation and Scale to apply both of those to our objects. We can also use F3 to bring up the search menu, search for Set Origin, and set the object origin to Geometry. Really quick, before we start working on the car, we're going to select the ground plane and make that a passive rigid body object just so that the car will have something to collide with. Let's move all those objects to their own collection, hide it, and unhide the collection for the car. Now we can set up the simulation on that. We'll do some work on the windows later, so just hide those for now. Let's make the car, wheels, and axles active rigid body objects and change the collision shape for the car body to mesh. Very cool. Now we are going to start doing some constraints so that all these pieces will stick together. Starting with the front, I'm going to select both wheels, then the axle, and add some constraints with the connect button under the object rigid body menu. I'll use that button to connect up the back wheels to their axle as well. Now I can select both the axles and then the car body and use that connect button again. You could use a different type of constraint here to allow the wheels to rotate, but for what we're doing with this sim, a fixed constraint is fine. Now we have the wheels connected to the axles and the axles connected to the car, so it will all stick together. And now for that moment you've all been waiting for, working on the windows. 
We are going to self-fracture them into a bunch of tiny pieces and then connect them up to the car with some rigid body constraints. And that way, when the wrecking ball collides, we can make these windows shatter. Before we start the self-fracturing, we need a particle system to fracture from. I'll give the windshield a new particle system, setting the frame start and end to 1. Let's also decrease the number of particles to about 100. Then I'll go to this source dropdown and change it to emit from the volume of the mesh instead of the faces. So long as we are on frame 1 down here on the outliner, the particles will appear. We need to link the particles to all the windows so we don't have to do this individually on each of them. Select all those windows, but make sure you select the one you gave the particles to last. Then press Ctrl L to link them, selecting modifiers as the things we want to link. Keep those selected and use F3 to search for and run the Cell Fracture add-on. Make sure to enable the add-on in your user preferences if it doesn't appear when you search. We want to fracture from own particles and leave the source limit at 100, as that's the number of particles we generated per window. Let's bump the noise up to 0.5 and name a collection to put all the fractured bits in once it's done. Now we can press this OK button and wash our hands while we wait. Alright, now that we've got solos, we need to select them all by right-clicking that collection and selecting Objects. To make all these active pieces, we can go to the object menu at the top left of the viewport, again going to the rigid body section, and add active. In the physics settings, we also need to change the weight of these cells to 0.02 kilograms, right click the value, and copy to selected. I'm going to hide the collection with the unbroken windows, and select all the fractured pieces by right clicking its collection and choosing select objects. We can hold down shift and select the body of the car, and then use that ultra convenient connect button one more time. This part could take a while, so be patient. A few minutes later, all those constraints will be generated. We just need to make sure they're all selected and then go to the physics settings. We can toggle on breakable and change the threshold to 0.1 or so. Right click and copy to selected on both of those values. Now we can play this back and the windows shatter when the wrecking ball collides with the car. Let's improve the quality just a bit by heading to our rigid body world settings. Let's increase the steps per second to 120 and the solver iterations to about 300. Then we can just open up the cache dropdown and bake our simulation. Now, unfortunately, when dealing with simulations like this, there can be a lot of little issues. The windows won't fracture right, the car will break apart, the collision doesn't look the best, etc. And sadly, I can't give a definitive answer to deal with all of those problems. Tweak the weights, change the threshold for breakability on the windows, and edit the simulation quality and speed. You might have to manually change individual constraints as well, if you want the simulation to be perfect. It can be pretty rough, but trial and error is how you have to refine these sort of things. And once you've tweaked your simulation and you're happy with how it turned out, I would love to see it if you link to it in the comment section. Also, quick side note, 87% of you people aren't subscribed to my channel, so do that if you like my content and want to help me out. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.